right. Now we're going to talk about fights this weekend. And we're going to talk about them in chronological order. Because there's a shit ton of fights this weekend. And we're not going to talk about them all in depth. Because honestly, we just don't have time for it. And there's too many fights. Okay. First first up on Friday on DAZN in Rome. The match from Italy card. Mm-hmm. Fabio Torche versus Tommy McCarthy and some other people that I don't know. I only know those guys, I'll be honest. But the zone card, Italy. Next card up on... No, sorry, that's Thursday. That's the Thursday card. Thursday, yeah. Yeah, Friday in Osaka, Japan. Honestly, the best card of the weekend, probably. Uh, Robert Brandt versus Ryota Moreda. Oh, 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 stop. What? It, you don't think it's the best card of the weekend? Hell no. Okay, we'll we have that discussion in a bit. Okay, we're going to have that discussion in a bit. Uh, Rob Brandt versus Ryota Moreda. And then Ken Shiro... Versus Jonathan Takaning, uh, yes, That's yes. That's why he thinks it's the best. Yes, thing. absolutely. <laughs> Ken Shiro is. is one of the best Japanese boxers on the planet right now. Fuck out of here. Also, Lunatic is saying uh, Torche or whatever his name is pulled out. So what? I don't know what's gonna happen to that. The zone Italy card. Don't care. Um, but basically, that's what we have for the Osaka Japan card. Brief breakdown of that. Bra Brant Moreta. Let's be honest, that should go the same way as the first fight, probably even more decisively and definitively. Like, I think Rob Brandt's going to have that performance, but a better performance of that, a better version of that, honestly. And yeah, the last fight was like, uh, whatever, underdog. Now he's like similar, but favorite, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's complete switcheroo. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think Murata was completely exposed in that fight as being a poor man's triple G. Please tell me your card of the weekend is not the Amir Khan card. No, it's not. Okay, okay. I'm like, that's a funny one. Um, anyways, digressing. Um, next up uh, for the weekend, Liverpool, England, ESPN Plus. I would assume this is a BT card. Uh, uh, MTK show. Oh, okay. Uh, Jazza D- uh, Dickens versus Nathaniel May. Martin Murray on the card. Natasha Jonas. Terry Flanagan making his comeback and going back down to 135 that's on friday on espn plus and mtk global showtime on friday uh jermaine franklin versus jerry forrest and odo whalen versus bj flores very quick i was gonna say the mtk show rocky fielding was supposed to be yep. on there but he broke his toe and to his credit people will be like nah, broken toe whatever thought you were a fighter but um he's pulled out before the fight he's not fighting and then using it as an excuse um there is a Telemundo card in Florida on Friday. Don't know who is on the card. You can watch it. I'm not. On Friday as well is the American Billy Dib card and Harry Fury, Samuel Peter, and Prince Patel versus Mike Michael Bank- Banquets. Whatever his name is. <laughs> Banqu- Banqu- whatever. Fuck it. Um, yeah. I don't care about this card at all. These people no. are fighting. Good for them. Make money. Uh, very quick. Um, the Estrada card has got Hergovic on it, and he is fighting the guy that recently just knocked out um, Samuel Peter. Just for people that are wondering who Hergovic's opponent exactly is, but I think he was like a ten to one underdog, and he he knocks over Who's Samuel Her- Peter in four rounds. Hergovic. What what time Hergovic? I'm just saying, from the Estrada card, Hugovic is going to be on it. And for people who are wondering the, his opponent, because people have been like, who the fuck is that? But he was a 10 to 1 underdog against Samuel Peter, I think, last okay. time out and stopped Samuel Peter in four rounds. All right, who cares about that? Uh, moving on to Saturday right. now, which we're going to probably get to the card after this one that Rob is going to contend is the best card of the weekend. But first, of course, Stevenson versus Alberto Guevara. And then Joshua Greer versus Nikolai Patapov. Some other people on the card. I, yeah. It's the detail that I love. It's the detail. I love it. <laughs> what means the detail? It's just the, de- you know, all the, you know, the names correct. The in-depth take on all these fights. I love it. Oh, yeah. Because we have no in-depth takes on these fights because they That's don't matter. Right. No. Um, this is a lot. This is one of those weekends where it's a lot of fights that no one cares about. There's some fights we care about, but a lot of fights that just no one cares about. Um, and then on ESPN Plus in London, Daniel Dubois versus Nathan Gorman, Joe Joyce, Brian Jennings, Liam Williams versus Cam Ar- Archer, Akur. 
whatever his name is. <laughs> Spell it out. I'll read that. Uh, A C H O U R. Yeah, it's yeah, like what you said. <laughs> it's like what you said. Oh, that was a good one. That was good, Rob. I'm going to remember that one. Uh, there's a bunch of fights on this undercard. I don't know who any of these guys are. Don't care. But let's talk about at least the, the, the top two or three fights. Down to Bob Nathan Gorman. One of the better fights that's been made this year, in my opinion, just from like a stylistic perspective, maybe the ramifications of the winner of this fight in regards of the, the division. Um, I am still pretty firm in my pick. Daniel DeBrow, probably 7th, 8th, maybe ninth round TKO. I think it's going to be a really fun fight. I think these two guys are going to sort of meet each other in the center, exchange in the mid-range a lot. And it's going to be about who sort of lands the first shot. I'll be honest. I'll, I think both guys are pretty comparable in terms of technique, in terms of skill, even in terms of, like, speed. Um, like, I think these guys are, like, they match up almost mere images of each other and what they want to do and how they want to do it. But I think the brothers going to have a little bit better way of doing it. I think he is also one of those guys, I've talked about this before, he's one of those prospects that has been improving drastically fight to fight. I think when he first came on the scene as a pro, he was quite boring, didn't know how to really put his shots together, didn't really know how to land his power shots and then follow up with it. He is doing that far more often nowadays. So I'm picking down to Bois, sort of mid to late round TKO. Rob, your prediction on this uh, heavyweight main event? Oh, I'm really torn. I am honestly really torn. I think Gorman has definitely got the skills to take this long and get a decision. And even if he can take Dubois long, it'll be interesting to see do those big muscles, you know, how 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 does he uh you know sort of fare as far as you know oxygen to those muscles as he gets super tired and can Gorman maybe stop Dubois? And obviously Dubois, we know he's got crazy power. If he can catch you clean, it it can be all over. Um oh, I'm really torn on a It on is a, a great fight. Huh? It's a great fight. I love it. Yeah, it's a good fight. Shout out to the pair of them, you know. Um, uh, Frank Warren really wanted to delay this and put this off, but both guys wouldn't back out. So, you know, it's on. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm really torn on a decision on this one. Like, um, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'll say Gorman because you said Dubois. <laughs> Joe Joyce, Brian Jennings. I feel like Brian Jennings is the faster guy. He's probably the more fluid boxer of the two, but he's one of those guys that just has, like, he, he longer in the tooth, you know? Like, he's had far more wear and tear on his body. You know, he was outboxing Oscar Rivas and on his way to a decision win and then got finished in the last round. You know, I think Joe Joyce, he could lose every round, but if he lands a shot, I don't trust Brian Jennings right now. So, in the heavyweight division... That I mean, that is like the cardinal sin. If you can, if I cannot trust you to take a shot, you're you're no longer you're compromised more so than any other division. So I'm picking Joe Joyce to win round four or five KO. Ooh. I think he's I th- again he's going to get outboxed for two or three four rounds, and then all of a sudden, boom, catch him with the shot, follow up. Brian Jennings is going to be done. Um. I think Joyce wins. I do. I, I think, but I think this could go a little longer. Look, Joyce went. Was it six or seven with uh, Stiverne? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just Joyce, despite every, you know, it looks like he's throwing punches underwater. He's slow. It just doesn't look, but he obviously hurts people. He obviously hits hard. Um, you know, those, I don't know, it's, it's strange because you think there's no zip on the punches, there's no like pace to anything and he takes a whole bunch of shots just to land one um he's gonna be in brian jennings's face all night now it's up to jennings whether he can run all night well not run but you know box keep, him. keep things rangy or whether he think fancies uh going toe to toe and see where that ends up but i think joyce will get this but i think it's going to be a pretty decent test for joyce to see what um, what he's learned under Adam Booth. Apparently, he's worked a lot on footwork um, and things like that. So, it will be good to see if there is a change in his game or whether it's just a little bit too early to see those um, improvements coming in. But from 
reports that he has been working well in the gym and uh, and things like that. But yeah, I'll, I'll go with Joyce on this one. But I'll say more like a, I don't know, eight or nine, something like that, around eight or nine. I can see that absolutely. Um, just, it seems to like bludgeon, like the punches. Like I said, there's no snap on them or anything. Like there's no hand speed, but they kind just of, he kind of slaps with his palm sometimes too. Like it's it's weird, man. <laughs> how the fuck did he win a silver medal? Yeah, and how does he do capoeira? But then again, the like the Deontay Wilder, a guy that doesn't really have the best fundamental technique in boxing. Great power, right? But not the greatest technique. Yeah, but at he won a medal. At least he swings with like fucking like speed. And he's, no, you're like, right. Like, he's, it's he's, kind of like he's an athlete. Joe Joyce is not an athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, he's got a crazy engine. They got him in mean, juggernaut, so it's a slow diesel. It takes a while to get up to any kind of <laughs> any kind of speed, but once he's there, yeah, it's he's like a Prius, or well, he's just a Prius. Great gas mileage, yeah, yeah, but no real horsepower, you know. Yeah, not great to look at. No, definitely not. But oh, that being said, he does seem to be a bit of a wrecking machine, and it's working for him. So it does, whatever, it does the job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, another his own cart man so much content this weekend um, Carson California Ray Vargas Tomiki Kameda Diego De La Hoya Ronnie Rios uh, who else on this car no one of super note to be honest um, I do like that Diego De La Hoya Ronnie Rios fight though that, that is a good step up for Diego De La Hoya who has not looked the goods honestly but Ray Vargas Tomiki Kameda as Rob has stated on other shows, for the undisputed WBC title. Uh, will be probably one of the better action fights of the weekend, too, honestly. Like, this is going to be on par with uh, Nathan Gorman, Daniel Dubois, uh, Ken Shiro, Takaning. You know, like, th- this is going to be a really good fight. I am picking Ray Vargas slightly, but, Rob, through no real, you know, logic, because Kometa doesn't really do anything that I think is better than Ray Vargas. I don't think he has a better jab. I don't think he has better grit. I don't think he has better power. I don't think he's bigger than him. Like, there's really nothing Kometa does better or is better at than Ray Vargas. But we've seen a lot of guys get upset this year. It would not surprise me if Ray Vargas, a guy that has been fighting a lot, not really fighting the best competition at times, gets beat up by Tomiki Kometa. Would not surprise me at all. I'm picking Ray Vargas, though. Uh, Rob, thoughts on this card? Uh, well, interestingly, Lance Pugmire t- tweeted out, don't worry about Ray Vargas uh, wait for Saturday on the DAZN fight in Carson. The WBC uh, Super Bantamweight champion is at 122.5 now. So he's he's bang on course for making weight no trouble. Um, uh, I don't see an upset. I think Ray Vargas will do, will do, do his thing. But... Um, yeah, uh, very, just quickly wanted to jump back to the the, the best card of the weekend. Um, just people to keep an eye on Archie Sharp. Really like watching uh, Archie Sharp fight. That's also, the, also Sonny Edwards on the card. I, I forgot yeah, to see him. Yeah. He, the he, vacant IBF International Super Flyweight title. And Liam Williams is for what, I don't even know what good it is for anybody right now, but the vacant World Boxing Council um, silver middleweight title. So that's now been bumped down. Because we've got a franchise and now the actual wbc bout is now a regular Who the cares? silver i don't know Who was cares? it like tin foil, the tin foil i'm I'm, ge- I'm getting anxiety with you just mentioning all that i'll be honest like i feel like i just need to like go like meditate and relax after you stay in all that bullshit room. um last main card or big card we're going to talk about uh on fs1 on saturday jamal james for santonio demarco Robert Hellanius versus Gerald Washington. Carlos Balderas versus Robert Frankel. Charles Martin, guys. Charles fucking Martin. Rob. Fuck boxing. Fuck boxing. The man, the myth, the legend. Walks this earth like a god. Charles the King Martin. Um, I don't know if that's not his nickname, but I'm just going to say that. Um, guys, don't worry. Like... It's been a long road of bad boxing, but the God is here. The King is here, Charles Martin. We've been waiting for this. Uh, the prince, the Prince. He's been elevated, in my opinion. If Canelo can be elevated to franchise status, he can be elevated from Prince status. Absolutely. Um, 
Uh, I think Look, it should happen. Okay. If we get one quotable thing this weekend from Charles Martin, it's a plus. It's a plus, guys. Every fight could end in DQ and be shit, but if we get one quotable line from the king himself, it's all good. It's, it's all worth good. it. Yeah. It is. It's uh, worth it. Uh, but back to the the card and actually like the substance of the, the event. Jamal James and Tony DeMarco should be a easy fight for Jamal James, who's actually been looking quite decent lately. Like he's one of those guys that's seemingly putting it together in this sort of second stage of his career after a loss. Uh, Anto- Antonio DeMarco is a guy that is long in the tooth that while he's been hanging on and having some decent wins lately, he also has been some bad losses. And he's also older, naturally a smaller guy, significantly so since Jamal James is a giant for this division. Jamal James should win this one fairly easily within six rounds, in my opinion. Robert Helaney to Gerald Washington. I think it's going to be a good fight in the sense that... Oh, like, let me clarify that. Good in the sense... I mean, define that as we are finally going to know how good Gerald Washington is. Because if he cannot get past Robert Hellenius, then all the losses he has had against kind of decent opposition look a certain way. Uh, look a certain way. Because Robert Hellenius is one of the most boring fighters I have ever had the de- the uh, displeasure of watching in my career. Um and Carlos Balderas, decent prospect. Can't wait to see him. Also, Gary Ru- uh, Russell uh, Jr. brothers are on this card. Not Gary Russell himself, but his brothers, some of them are. So. Oh, they haven't in- inherited his um, willingness to only fight once a year. These guys are out a lot. Yeah, yep. Hey, but come on. No one just wants to... F- no one wants to fight Gary Russell, man. Leo doesn't want to fight him, obviously. Um, Javante Davis is ducking that work because he only fights bad 126 pounders, not good 126 pounders. Come on. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not really worried about the PBC card, which will uh, help everyone in the chat that thinks I'm an Eddie Hearn fanboy. <laughs> now, uh, Jamal James, I don't know. I think he's uh, failed to uh, live up to sort of the promise. I think. I've, I've never. I think he was highly touted at one point, but I, I don't think he's kind of fell off a little bit now, personally. Uh, maybe. Um, last fight we mentioned is Tony Oko, who's fighting this weekend on Saturday against Alexander Dimitriko, which actually is a decent heavyweight fight. It's off TV; you can't watch it unless you find it on stream. It's in France. Um, Are you not on TV, Matt. What was that? Have you not got French TV in your household? No, we don't, man. We don't. Uh, you- you still got the Portuguese channel. You still right? got the Portuguese channels because, you know, it's a new d- discovery that we're French. Uh, but I like that fight for Tony Oko against Alexander Dimitrico, who last uh, faced uh, Andy Ruiz, right? And lost yep. in was that February or something like that. It was the, uh, wasn't it the Spence Garcia card, maybe? Mm. Uh, I can't remember. But yeah, March. No, I don't think it was Spence Garcia. What no, it? it was later than that because that's then Ruiz was straight into camp for Joshua, right? Yeah, and it wasn't the Danny Garcia Fox card. I think it was the Danny Garcia Fox card because I think it was at the StubHub. But anyways, no. digressing. Or the Dignity Health and Sports Center, or whatever it's called now. <laughs> uh, digressing. That is it for the news. It for the fights. Let's go to callers. Three. 